Number 20, Jeff Morris. Morris, a good playmaker. He can shoot it pretty well, too, when he has to. So that's top-ranked McLeansboro. Number one AP, number one UPI. The officials, Richard Carter out of Rantoul and Jim Pownall from Decatur. And one of your network sponsors, Mount Pulaski in their traveling purple. There's a check of the lineups, as they were given to you by Tom Trent on the public address system. No changes. The same combos both clubs have gone with throughout the tournament grind. Settle back, Bob Dallas. I don't want you getting excited here. Well, I'll tell you, this is exciting. These are two <laughs> great ball clubs and two well coached, real fine coach. Cook jumping against Sloan. Sloan slaps off the opening tip to Tracy Sturm, and we're underway. McLeansboro with the opening jump ball. Craven's on the right wing. Down low, they go to Sloan immediately. Working on Cook. Back out front to Tracy Sturm. He goes to Morris. Morris, top of the free throw circle against his own defense. Inside to Sloan. Twist up against Cook. Got it. Foxes draw first blood on the turn around. In the paint by Brian Sloan. Here is Roger Cook, Sloan behind him. Foxes on his own defense of their own, it looks like. Or they play a man to man. Yeah, they're man, they're to, man, man to man, man yep. Yeah. Hayes works on the right side. Now to Olden uh, into uh, Cook. Here's a reach in on Sloan. Yeah, he reached over. It's going to be a big situation, the foul column tonight. And Brian Sloan tends to foul. Really will be a big situation, Art. And you have to remember also that while Brian Sloan's a great player, Mount Pulaski did a number on Lowell Hamilton earlier. True. Here's Darren Powell, speaking of great players, his jumper just caromed off the back iron. Going along to Mount Pulaski. Big crowd on hand at the Assembly Hall, perhaps uh, not quite as big as it might have been because uh, of the uh, bad road condition in the northern part of the state. I think a lot of people may have left after the third place game, particularly some of the St. Mel people. Here is uh, Cook twisting left hand to the hoop. No good. Rebound was tipped up by Sloan, almost tipped it in. Almost slapped it back in the go. All right, here are the Foxes with the basketball. Defensive zone. A lot of pressure being applied back here by Edwards. Rick Edwards puts the heat on. Sloan comes back. Notice the way Sloan came back to the 10-second line to help out against the press. The toppers are zoning, but they're playing almost man-to-man -man on the ball. Sturm from the side. He likes that shot, Art. That's his spot off the baseline there. He, he likes most shot. of them. He's shooting 56% from the field. Fine shooter. 4 nothing. Foxes lead it. Here's Rick Edwards. Edwards drives it down, left side, bounce pass in the middle. The ball goes to Holden, and there's a reach in on Brian Sloan, his second personal foul. And over on the McLeansboro bench, David Lee starting to stir a little bit. And he's going to look at it again. Brian Sloan reaches in here on a low bounce pass. He reaches in. He definitely does. Of course, he fell back after he, he knew he had uh, got caught with a hand in the cookie jar. Some debris has been uh, tossed out on the floor here. Dave Lee went out, did a little pickup work, and now official Richard Carter. Art, as we have a moment here, uh, we'll give some credit as we look at David Lee to the principals, Joe Zimmerman of Mount Pulaski, the principal there, and Ernest Van Zandt of McLeansboro. You think they've had a hectic month of March? Frank? You bet. Jumper from the side, no good. Rebound by Cook goes up, partially deflected. But the Poppers retain the basketball, batted back out front. Scott Olden in the middle to Roger Cook. Off the glass, won't go. Ryan Sloan goes high and severs the rebound. Still 4-0 McLeansboro. We played 11 seconds shy of two minutes in this state championship ball game. Holding high is Scott Cravens. Cravens looking at an extended, uh, almost an extended 1-3-1 it appears. Depends on the way they attack these zones, how they look. You look at it now, it's almost a 1-2-2. I believe that uh, uh, the toppers are playing a 1-2-2 zone. Double team on against Sloan, and uh, the side got a bit too aggressive. Foul is whistled on Steve Hayes. Well, uh, not Pulaski. Art, they would. They uh, have Sloan boxed up here. They would like to get that third foul on him by pushing off right here, you know. This is why they're falling in on so hard. And they just trap him in there. Ball is inbounded to Morris. Morris tries to go to Sloan, pass deflected away. The intercept to Rick Edwards. Edwards skies high for Ed Petkovich's purple clad, uh, not Pulaski toppers. Off this time, a jump shot on the way by Powell, but he didn't take it. Kicks it out to Hayes. He shoots. Powell, I thought, for certain was going to gun the jumper. Instead, he got it out to Hayes. It becomes a turnover, finally, in McLeansboro with the basketball. Left side, Stacy Sturm holds the basketball. Up front to Jeff Morris. This game probably at the McLeansboro Temple right now. Now, Pulaski hasn't really been able to get the Jets going. Of course, they didn't for a while against St. Mel this afternoon, either. Sturm, baseline left. Right back to Morris. Morris to Sturm. A lot of room on the baseline there for Sturm. He's free at about 10 feet. Fires up an air ball. Too much room. Not Pulaski. Off the floor. Scott Olden. 
holding to Rick Edwards. Edwards holding. Cook throws it up inside. Here's Hayes, top of the circle. Iron, no good. Rebound, hauled down by Craven. Neither club exactly hot right now, and I think a lot of it is championship game tenseness. They'll get out of it. I think so. That uh, Tracy Sturm seldom ever missed a shot as much as he missed that one down there. They're both guys. Bob a little tight right now. Both teams are probably a shade more tired, certainly than they were earlier in the day. And there's a lot of tension when you're playing for all the marbles. Morris to Craven. Ravens back to Morris. Morris top of the circle to Tracy Sturm to Brian Sloan. He got it. Brian Sloan. Little turnaround jumper on the baseline. We have a whistle stopping play. That's a tough, that's a tough shot to stop back there. Falling away at 6-8. Foul has been called. There's a timeout. 6-0 McLean's one of your timeout was taken uh, prior to the personal foul being committed. So we have a no foul charge, 421 to go in the quarter, 21 seconds shy of half of the period. The toppers haven't scored as yet. They're down 6 nothing. All right, it's Hayes, left side. Works off to Powell, jumper, good. And he'll break uh, that drought in a hurry. Darren Powell got to the baseline and hit a sizzling jumper to make it 6-2. He had 25 this afternoon in that 76-74 semifinal win over Providence St. Mel. Craven's defensive zone right back to Morris. Morris for the Foxes coming through the center circle. He drives it right. He's trying to buy Edwards. Edwards back away from the eye. Back quickly to Olden. Edwards' the shot was blocked in spectacular fashion. A great defensive play by Tracy Stern. I don't, I don't think he laid a hand on it. Oh, it was a beautiful block. And knock the ball away from Morris and take it down. Looks like he's all alone. And here comes Tracy. Sturm and slams it out of bounds. Nothing but basketball. Beautiful, beautiful defense. Hoppers have it into Raj Cook, left corner. Back out front that. to Steve Hayes. Excuse me, Art, almost long enough for a jump ball there. Almost. Cook turns and gets it. Roger Cook in that little turnaround effort against St. Bell this afternoon. Just enough to keep uh, St. Bell off stride. Now it's a 6 4 ball game. McLeansboro leads by a bucket. 336 showing first quarter. Very tough championship ball game, as everybody anticipated it would be. On the left-hand dribble is Jeff Morris. Morris to Sturm, back to Morris, off to Cravens. Brian Sloan, right corner, out of the post now, outside the zone defense. Now watch Sloan slide inside, big number 45. I think the ball's gonna go to Tracy over here. It does, he pumps it, he's got it. 8-4, down over the timeline, the toppers. They were trying to get him one-on-one -on -one over there, and he can put it on the floor and go to the goal. Roger Cook to Edwards, 4-2. Rick Edwards, top of the circle. 8 6. Two point lead being held by the Foxes. Morris now to Stacy Stern. Look at the way Brian Sloan handles himself, putting the ball on the floor. He goes to the baseline, eyes the bucket, right back out of the top of the circle to Morris. Here's Sturm. Sturm down from uh, Sloan to Stacy Stern. Can't get it to stick. Rebound controlled by Rick Edwards. Edwards for the purple clad toppers from Mount Pulaski. On the right side of the floor, Olden carries the holds the basketball. Fires it out front to Powell for two. Darren Powell, super shooter. He's coming right back to, from the same game this afternoon. He's shooting that 22 footer with just tremendous accuracy. Eight, eight. Eight. Maybe the best pure shooter in the tournament. I don't think there's any question about it. And there's, this has been a tournament replete with very fine shooters. You know, that's a trademark of Class A. There's so many great shooters in the Class A schools year after year. Well, a few years ago named Jay Scheidler, who filled it up pretty well, as I recall. He was a Class A shooter, was he not? He could shoot him in the dark. Marty Simmons wasn't too bad last year. <laughs> Make the sub to uh, Brian Cross coming in now. Cross has uh, really filled a vital role for David Lee in this tournament. I assume he has all year, Bob. Yeah, he's replacing uh, Stacy's term. Good size, youngster, 6'3". Brian Sloan. A little short jumper in the paint, couldn't get it. Scott Olden, who's had a big day, playing very well, got that rebound. Here is Powell, and Powell has been whistled. This one is on Tracy Sturm. These two teams have the look of being extremely well matched. Tracy Sturm reaches in here, reaches in right here, and uh, gets caught. Actually dead. It was, it was a good call. Tracy just reached over. All right, Darren Powell, inbounds pass to Hayes, kicks it right back out to Olden for the jump. Won't go, great rebound, Brian Sloan over Roger Cook. The two big guys went to it inside, but Sloan is three inches taller than Cook and three pounds lighter, if you believe the statistics. Over the timeline with it is Cravens. Cravens out uh, front to Morris. Back to Cravens. Looking at that zone defense, we're down to 
132 to go in the first period. McLeansboro playing the liberal style. Now they want the high percentage shot with the game done locked at eight apiece. Brian Cross. Look at Sloan inside with Cook right behind him. Here's Moss. Shot was partially deflected. Rolls loose on the floor. Darren Powell for the toppers behind the back dribble. Still has it. Picks it up loose on the floor. Hands it off this time to Scott Olden. Olden to Powell. The feed to Cook. Right back out to Hayes. Now to Edwards. Back to Roger Cook. He twists. He shoots. It rolls good. First lead from out Pulaski. Roger Cook on the turnaround. 10-8. Toppers. Ball deflected out of bounds by He's going to go right back to McLeansboro. Under a minute to go in the game's initial period. Now Pulaski's coming up now with a more of a hard press, and it looks like more or less a man-to-man -man press. Indeed it does. They're picking him up tough. Here is Cross back in the defensive zone to Moss. Now finally over the 10-second line, right back to Brian Cross for McLeansboro. See if the Fox will run it down for one shot. 42 seconds to go in the opening period. Right side to Scott Craven. Ravens free throw line extended right to Brian Sloan. His turnaround ever misfires and Cook fouled it. Cook got him on the arm. Roger Cook has looked bigger to me every ball game in this tournament, fellas. Is, it, is he growing or is he playing bigger? He's playing, playing bigger than he was the first day we saw him. You know, he might have been 6'5 in October, too. <laughs> yeah. Free throw Brian Sloan. Yep, you see. Even for the standout Sloan, everything doesn't go well every ball game. That one just kind of caromed off the outer iron. He'll have one more attempt. He's got a great game this afternoon. This to Bear. Rebound batted out front. Cross to Cravens. But Plainsboro has it back for half a minute. One player all the way down the floor. Hayes for the toppers. So right now it's five on four. Art, I believe that Tracy Stern might have been injured on that block he made a while ago. He seemed like he's limping, if you know yeah, it. Yeah, he is. He, uh, he fell pretty hard there a while ago, and he blocked that shot. Now they run Hayes back on defense. For a while there, it was five on four. The Greensboro didn't go to the basket. Cravens off the glass for them. That Cravens just kissed the glass with that soft jumper. 10-10, two seconds for the quarter. Powell fires it up. Had a chance. Caromed off, and at the end of one period, even Stevens. Tracy, the box is 10. And of course, Mount Pulaski, Tim. Walking a bit gingerly. You thought he might have got a hip banged up out there. I thought he hit the floor pretty hard, Art, when he went up for the block, and he he, he got up a little slow. Dr. Bassoni may have an answer for I it. I just went over to talk to the uh, the bench over there, and he did hit his right hip on the floor, and it's uh, it's hurting him a little bit, but he intends to be right there. Okay, there's the opening jump of Chapter 2. Left side of the floor is Tracy Sturm. Hoppers in a kind of a loose zone, I'd say. They're packing it back, trying to uh, contain Brian Sloan. But, of course, the problem with Sloan is he's so mobile, he'll go outside as much as he goes inside. So, uh, really, the heat is basically on Brian Cross back there right now. Tracy Sturm, right side, Cravens holds. Here's Sturm, Cravens with the basketball. Look at the double team around Sloan. They drop the man off uh, and drop him in front of Sloan. And he's two men on him, brought it back. Sloan got the bucket anyway that time. Beat the double team. 12 10 McLeansboro. Roger Cook posting up in front of Sloan. With the basketball, Darren Powell. Powell off to Hayes. Hayes starts to make the move. Cut off tough on the inside. Here's Cook. Offensive foul. It was Jeff Morris taking the uh, charge on the inside. Here's the team statistical story. First quarter, McLeansboro, very respectable. 5 of 9. 55 percent. Mount Pulaski, 5 of 15 in the first quarter, shooting 33. Free throw is not a factor. Rebound 7-6, Mount Pulaski. Turnover is not a factor as yet. Only one in the ball game thus far. Here's Brian Sloan to the baseline, pulls it up at 10, in and out, rebound. All down by Dan Edwards. Brian Sloan went, might have been out of his uh, shooting range at that time, Art. Yeah, Edwards really skied. This whole Mount Pulaski club can shoot. They all hit the boards. Darren Powell, rolls good. Now that's what you call a soft touch, Frank. Hit on the back iron, about straight up in the air and fell through. He's one of those guys who can actually shoot a lot of times and never miss one in a game. Yep. 12 12. That's six points for Darren Powell. Good championship battle thus far. Morris, the stir. Right side. The Cravens. Around the zone. Very patient, this McLeansboro ball club. Well drilled by David Lee, as are the toppers of Coach Ed Butkovich. Right corner now to Brian Cross. Pushes it up and won't quite go. Rebound. Tracy's third. No good. Brian Sloan scores. Eight 
points for Sloan. He has eight out of his team, 14. Boxes by two. Across Steve Hayes, little five foot nine inch backliner. Sails inside. Bounce pass to Cook. The ball is deflected on the baseline, either by Morris or by Sloan. One of the two. Championship game of the state class A basketball tournament. It's been a Saturday full of surprises. The big one was the Mount Pulaski upset win over Providence St. Bell. St. Bell won the third place ball game. Edwards with a short point. Edwards, little tiny jumper. Mini jumper, we might call that, Frank, at about four feet. Game tied at 14 14. Defensive zone, Tracy Sturm. Sturm drives right between two. Puts on the brakes, top of the circle. Probably going to penetrate it all the way to the free throw line. Pulled it up just a shade, but McLeansboro really not trying to run at all so they're, far, Bob. They're uh, actually playing about three people on Sloan in there. There's a jumper by Sturm. No good. That's by Tracy. The rebound, Holden. Holden gets it out for the toppers. They roar it down. Left side of the floor. In the corner. It was Edwards to Hayes. Hayes now right back to Holden. He dropped it. Lansboro is going to have to start hitting some outside shots, Art. They're just uh, sinking so hard on uh, Sloan that uh, they can't get the ball to him. Yeah, they have three guys in the paint defensively and sometimes four. Sure. David Lee has taken off his sport coat. He's ready to go to work. The skipper of McLeansboro. There's uh, Tracy Stern to the 10-second line. Double team by Powell and Hayes. They got it off to Morris. Right side to Cravens. Back to Morris. Left side to Stern. To Morris. Morris looking in the middle to Sloan. Can't get it in there right now. Brian Cross, left baseline. The 2-3 zone there by Mount Pulaski. Still the 2-3 with a lot of attention to the big guy in the middle. You can see that on your screen very carefully. Sloan rolls inside the bottom and good by Morris. Well, that's exactly what Bob Dallas was talking about. Shooting over the zone. Tracy Sturm's going to have to start hitting, too, or else they're not going to get the ball in the slump. 16-14, long push by Hayes. No good rebound, Sloan. And, of course, on the other side of the coin, the toppers have to put it down on the perimeter, too, that's because right. of the Queensboro size inside. I really I really think that uh, Mount Pulaski has got a little bit better outside shooter than the Queensboro has. Well, they have so far in the tournament. Don't have the strong inside game, of course. Although uh, Cook has played well today. Ryan Sloan, baseline left, goes down low, posting low now is Tracy Sturm. This is Morris, number 20. Sturm, baseline left, he got it. Three fielders for Tracy Sturm, 18-14. The Plains are now with a two-bucket lead. Actually, Sloan and Sturm just switched positions that time, Art. Ball, the bucket out of bounds, they can't hold it. Sloan went outside, Stacy inside, and then they just switched up. Not ball just checking in, Frank. Your network co-sponsors, DeKalb, Pfizer Genetics, Country Companies Insurance, Alice Chalmers, and Lasso. Very happy to be able to present tonight's action from Class A. We hope you're enjoying. And don't forget, we'll be back for the Class AA next week and then the girls' championship the following week. Let's get a look at uh, David Lee, the uh, skipper of the McLeansboro Foxes. His ball club up a couple of buckets. Matt Walsh, a super sub for Matt Pulaski, has checked in. Ryan Sloan holding the ball high over his head, left baseline to Morris. They go low to Stern, back to Sloan, back to Morris. Morris with the jumper, can't go. Nice rebound, Pat Walsh. Walsh is really exciting. He's 5'10", a 150-pound junior. Average of 7.1, but more important than that is the spark plug for this ball club. Edwards, down low, gets it to Olden. Hook layup, good. Basket's going to count, foul by Cross. Oh, what a pretty play that time by Olden. He sure hooks him on his shot. He gets, he makes a beautiful, puts it on the floor, and he reaches, Brian Cross reaches over, catches him on the left arm. 18-16, and so here we have the opportunity for Olden to pull his ball club within a point. Olden is a free throw shooter, is 7.33 on the season. Not bad, good free throw shooting ball club, this uh, Mount Pulaski quintet. Good defensive team, 50.8 defensive average for the year. On the other hand, McLeansboro has a defensive average of 44.2. 18-16 after the missed throw. Fox's defensive zone. Three-quarter court zone trapping pressure right now. Not real intent for the toppers as yet. 305 to go in a rapidly played first half. Archer uh, leaving Craven pretty well open on the wing out there. I'm surprised he's not shooting the ball more. Here's Sloan to stir right back to Sloan down the baseline. Drive to the score. And a foul has been whistled as well. The Greensboro fans, I think, wanted a traveling ball. And the foul is going to go against Matt Walsh, his first. Let's watch Looks it. Looks like he did, might have taken a sip, but I guess he did. He just was faking. Yeah, there's where he might have That's right. Well, his pivot foot never did move, Art. Well, the official says it didn't move. That's what's important. 
Sloan is at the line, 20 to 16. I think you'll see uh, uh, Craven, Scott Craven's getting some shooting in there, sinking off of him pretty well on the right. Well, Sloan makes it a three-point play, his first free throw conversion of the evening. Time out with 2.54 to go, McLeansboro by five, and one of your network sponsors with Coach Bob Dallas from Ridgeway, and of course, Frank Bassoni, dandy title game thus far. For Mount Pulaski Art, Dan McHugh, a 6-1 senior, number 35, is checked in the lineup. We have a 1-2-2 two, two zone press now going against Mount Pulaski. Aaron Powell lights it up from the right side, his fourth bucket. That's the best way I know to break that press. Swing it on down and jump shoot the 21-footer. 21-18, three-point lead now being held by uh, McLeansboro. Powell, of course, is such an important factor in the offensive uh, efforts of Mount Pulaski. Here's Tracy Thurm. Right side to Craven. Crowd warming up to this one. Morris. I'm actually surprised Art when Powell misses one. Hey, yeah, I am too. Hasn't missed many in this tournament. Tracy Sturm to Morris. Penetration to Tracy Sturm. Baseline Brian Cross looks at Brian Cross, little soft push. Baseline left about a nine or ten footer. That's why he's in the lineup, uh, Art. He can shoot that baseline shot. 23 to 18. Edwards for the toppers out front to Pat Walsh. He goes inside to Olden, knocked away. Good defense by Cross. But Walsh, hustling hard all the way, gets it right back. McHugh now, number 35, is just roll left side of the uh, free throw lane. And we have a reach foul called the inside. This may go on Cross again. It does. Another foul on Brian Cross, his second. Team foul number five on McLeansboro. So that means the bonus rule will be in effect as far as uh, the toppers are concerned. However, not real important right now because on the next uh, Mount Pulaski foul, McLeansboro also will be on the bonus. Free throw, Olden. What's important is whether you make him or not, and Olden has made that one. That's the bonus throw. 23 to 19, can pull his ball club back within three. Second toss, up and in. All Mount Pulaski is trying to do today is knock off in successive games the number two and number one team in the state of Illinois. It's a pretty big order. They've already done the half of that job. It's a full day's work. I'm sure that uh, Ed Butkovich would tell us that, and so would his youngsters. 23 to 20, McLeansboro. They've got the ball. Don't bet the house and the Ferrari on it. No. Well, I had planned on betting my Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> my side is craving. How about my boat, Frank? <laughs> All right, here's Morris holding on to Craven. This Mount Pulaski makes believers out of you, don't they? They indeed do. Morris, or them being here is never really a surprise. It's a great program. Here is Frost. He's trying to jot right in his face. Reach in foul on Scott Olden. I think McLean's Burrow's key now, Bob, is their patience. I, uh, I agree with taking that. taking the bad shots. If you'll notice that Scott Craven come, uh, comes in low here. Cross comes in low and he and back door play and, and he gets fouled on the shot. If you notice all the attention's up on Sloan. Sloan yep. moves up a little higher and he clears the baseline. Now Cross just chucked in the free throw. Got the first one. 24-20. Boxes lead by four. One more throw coming to Ryan Cross. Eisen tries it. Got it. 25-20. The Claysboro by five. Hoppers need a bucket. Here is Darren Powell. He fires. No good on the outer iron. Ball is taken down by Tracy Sturm in the defensive paint with a minute to go in the first half. Halftime of this one, of course, we'll have the presentation of the third and fourth place awards. One shot would be my guess now for McLeansboro. That would dovetail nicely with the way they played the entire first half. But they'll probably take that first shot that they consider very, very high percentage. Hoppers in that zone defense, still a 2-3. With extra attention on Brian Sloan. Tracy Sturm holding left side. Here's Craven swinging left. There's Sturm number 42. Sloan's got it. Turn around. He missed it. The rebound on the floor. Right back out front to Tracy Sturm with 26 seconds. And we'll do it all again Will the McLeansboro Fox. I believe it's a Tracy Sturm shot here. You said that the whole tournament. You've only missed once. So I, I, know. I won't argue with you. Well out the floor is Morris. He just holds it. Jeff Morris. Watch Tracy go through off the other wing. Okay, there's Morris. There he is. Sturm swings there around to the right side. He's got it. There's the shot. He missed it. Sloan with the board. Up and in. Brian Sloan caps a nine-point quarter after the Sturm miss. Offensive board poked it back in, and as a result, he got a... For Boys Class A State Basketball Tournament. 
Making the presentations will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors and administrative staff. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the fourth place team will be Mr. Edward Olds of Chadwick High School, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board, and Dr. David Turner of Porta High School in Petersburg, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. At this time, please meet the Panthers of Lena Winslow High School, who finished the 1984 season in fourth place with a final record of 25 wins, only six losses. Please meet the principal of Lena Winslow High School, David Morrison. Head coach, Dick Laity. Assistant coach, Jim Cox. Assistant coach, Mike Taft. Number 10, Charlie Altenburn. Number 20, Jack Fraser. Lena Winslow bows Number 24, to Shane Bell, 79 Shane 65 Stauffer. in the third place game. Shane Stauffer receiving his medal. Number 30, Kelly Lobdell. Number 32, Ryan Schulz. Number 40, Bob Werhain. Number 42, Mike Haas. Number 34, Jim Kleckner. Number 44, Scott Bonnet. Number 52, Mike Jensen. Number 12, Joe Miller. Number 14, Justin Yeager. Mark Mao. And manager Chris Heibach. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the third place team will be Dr. Richard Stevenson of Dunbar High School in Chicago, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board, and Mr. Raymond Collier of Aurora East High School in Aurora, who serves the IHSA as treasurer. At this time, please meet the Knights of Providence St. Mel High School, who finished the 1984 season in third place with a final record of 30 wins, only four losses. The principal of Providence St. Mel, Paul J. Adams. The head coach, Tom Shields. Assistant coach, Bill Ochepka. Assistant coach, Bud Williams. Assistant coach, Len Benefico. Number 10, Fernando Bunch. Very, very popular crowd-pleasing player in this tournament, Fernando Bunch. Number 14, Curtis Jackson. Number 20, Robert Turnbow. Number 22, Sherman Igus. Number 24, Keith Langston. Number 30, Larry Gibbons. Number 32, Elia McGee. Number 34, Joe Jackson. Number 40, Mark Smith. Number 44, Lowell Hamilton. There's Lowell Hamilton set a record for blocked shots. In the state Number tournament. 50, Terry Miles. Number 54, Douglas Johnson. All of these judges will be back. manager, Greg Lowry. Providence St. Mel, the third place finisher. Presenting the fourth place Lena trophy tonight in the third will be place Mr. Game. Gail Borton of West Frankfurt High School. Frankfurt, who serves the IHSA as a secretary of the board. Will coach Dick Laity and the captains of Lena Winslow please step forward to receive your fourth place trophy.
What an accomplishment for any high school. Lena Winslow finishes fourth in this year's state Class A tournament. You can see they hold that trophy proudly, very high as well they should. Came in here and were a very exciting combination. Presenting the third place trophy will be Dr. Nicholas Manis of Niles West High School in Skokie. Uh, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. Well, head coach Tom Shields and the captains of Providence St. Bell step forward to receive your third place trophy. And there's a third place trophy to Providence St. Bell. The ball club that was ranked number two in the Ladies state. 52%, Mount Pulaski 9 of 21, 42%. Free throws 3 of 5 for the Foxes, 2 of 3 for Mount Pulaski. Rebounds 13-10, edge to McLeansboro. Turnovers haven't been a factor, Bob Dallas. Only three for the toppers, one for McLeansboro. And under the uh, defensive pressure that both teams apply in art, it's amazing that they've only been four turnovers in the whole first half. Uh, I think that McLeansboro will continue the same type of game. I think they will have to go a little bit more outside shooting because I think they'll just constantly drop it in even tighter on the, uh, Brian Sloan. In all probability, one of your network sponsors. Two minutes of the game and went on through the first half never had another foul. That's true. Foxes have the opening jump. They're moving to your right in their white uniforms. Uh, on Pulaski to traveling purple on the baseline. Sloan on that turnaround. I think it's going to count. It is. And he was fouled by Roger Cook. Well, that's a big start to this third quarter. He nets this free throw. It's a three-point margin you know, it's a, a ten-point lead. Brian Sloan here gets the ball. He pumps it once. And this throw is number 45 off the feet, and he takes it right up and hits it to a possible three-point play. Good move by Brian Sloan. Well, that's a big, big play to start the quarter, and Sloan nets it. He now has 16 points. 30 to 20, 10-point lead for McLeansboro, the biggest advantage they had in the ball game. Well, out on the floor, Edwards. Edwards to Hayes, down low to Olden. Olden picked up by Stacy Stern, takes Stacy to the hoop. Houston misses it, but uh, Brian Sloan grabbed the rebound, and he was fouled by Scott Oldham. Yes, Scott Oldham here just was not in position to get this rebound. Brian Sloan already had it, and he jumps into him right here, backs into him. Good call, referee. Brian Sloan way up above everyone. See, Brian handled that basketball like it was a volleyball. That's true. His hand wrapped around it over the time stripe. You notice, Art, they bring uh, Brian Sloan all the way out the middle of the court to handle the ball. He's a high post man right now, 45. He's had 16. That's Tracy Sturm, 42 on the right wing. Actually, on the left wing, as you view it, on the uh, right wing is Freeman. Low, little alley oop. Tracy yeah, Sturm to Sloan, misses it. Ryan tips it, can't get it. The rebound taken out of there by Stacy Sturm. He clears it back to Craven. Off to Jeff Morris on the point. Gambling was Darren Powell on the steal. Couldn't find it. Tracy Sturm travel. Both traveling. Tracy Sturm, the sandy haired junior uh, younger brother of Tracy Sturm. A little excited there on the baseline. Took an extra step or two, and uh, McLeansboro goes back on defense. I kind of thought that uh, Mount Pulaski would take the ball inside more and maybe try to draw a foul or two more on uh, Brian Sloan. They need some offense right now of any sort. Here's Edwards. Edwards to Olden. Olden powers that whistle. Pulaski started like this to start of the ball game, and then scrapped back and finally got a 10-10 tie at the end of the quarter. And they're in essence uh, in much the same position here, except they're in the third period, down 10. Morris looking at uh, three-quarter court pressure, but it's not really tough and tent pressure yet by the top. Right side is Cravens. Cravens hands the ball back to Jeff Morris from McLeansboro. McLeansboro looking for his first state title. The ball was stolen, then taken right back by Morris. Stripped away. Hayes had it after the Jenkins steal, or the Edwards steal, I should say, and then it was taken right back by Jeff Morris. Ryan Sloan holds high left corner. Jumper Cravens, good. Scott Cravens, 32 to 20, and now a 12-point lead to McLeansboro. They were leaving Scott Cravens open a little bit in the second quarter. I thought he might start shooting some. David Lee probably told him to put it up a little bit, don't you imagine, at halftime? I, I believe he did. On the dribble is uh, Steve Hayes. Hayes, hook pass, intercepted, picked off by Jeff Morris. Morris, crowded by Hayes. You're seeing some tremendous defense by the McLeansboro Foxes, Art. Well, you hold a club like Mount Pulaski through two periods and uh, two minutes of the third quarter to 20 points, I guess. McLeansboro, if you're keeping time of possession in the game, the Foxes have held the ball a goodly portion. I don't mean by that not tried to score. They just possess the basketball. Ravens in the corner. Here's Tracy Sturm. Brian Sloan in, dips the shoulder, shoots it, got it. And 
and uh, Darren Powell apparently got an elbow underneath. He's shaking up a little bit. Sloan with a great move inside. What a ball game he's having. Sloan now with 18 points. My recollection uh, does not give me his exact total this afternoon, so I'm going to look it up. Brian Sloan had 26 this afternoon, so he's having himself a pretty fair country day here in the assembly hall. Darren Powell. He's swept down 14. Here's an interception. Taken away All by away. Jeff Morris. Coast to coast solo for two. Ed Butkovich going to have to have a timeout. Not Pulaski now down 16. They have to take the timeout. 5-17 for the third quarter. And one of your network Foxes. Easy bucket. Another great defensive play by the Foxes. Back to live action. And Darren Powell threads the needle. Darren Powell, high archie, right-handed jumper. 36-22. A little full-court man-to-man pressure now as uh, McLeansboro getting a good look at it. Cravens has the ball. Timeline now across to Tracy Sturm to Brian Sloan against Cook. Good Inside the Sturm. Oh. Yep. Sloan has proven himself a very fine passer today, too. 38-22. Darren Powell for Matt Pulaski won't go. Here's Scott Olden. Olden left side of the lane. Back out front. Works the ball off to Edwards. Edwards holds it. They're cooked. Well out on the floor now to Hayes. Hayes, baseline right to Holden. Holden, lost. Slow to Cook. Cook over Sloan. Got it. Of course, with the lead now, the defensive pressure's off Brian Sloan a little bit. He'll give Cook a little more room on the inside. Uh, Sloan picked up two fouls early. And as Bob Dallas pointed out, has played a goodly portion of the game with no more difficulty at all. 14 point McLeansboro lead. A long, long way to go in the ballgame. Brian Sloan dribbles three times to Cravens. Cravens on the right wing against his own defense. Sloan's still drawing the crowd, though, Art. Well, certainly. I don't want to give the ball into him. I was talking about Sloan primarily defensively against Cook. Here's Sloan. He kicks it back to Cravens. Cravens, 12-footer. Rebound. All down. Controlled by Darren Powell. Powell off to Hayes. Skipping up over the timeline is Steve Hayes. Right corner, curly-haired guard. Gives the ball to Cook. Cook turns. And sagging back in is Morris on the foul. Foul number one on Jeff Morris. And we're going to have uh, McHugh checking in the ballgame for uh, Mount Pulaski. Actually, both of these clubs have been pretty mal, pretty much seven-man ball clubs in this tournament. Actually, McLeansboro has been pretty much a six-man club. And the seven men have played on a pretty regular basis for Mount Pulaski. Roger Cook is at the line. Cook is a 7.69 free throw shooter. Averaging 8.1, he shoots a pair. One more to Roger Cook. The Assembly Hall in Champaign. Boy, it's hard to believe this arena has been here the number of years it's been, and the great state tournaments that have been staged. Second throw, got a pair. Invite you to join us next week for the double A firing. Here's truly Art Kimball with you, Frank Masoni, Bob Dallas, of course, won't be with us, but our double-A uh, color man, commentator, will be the one and only Ron Nikovich, the skipper at Lions Township High School in LaGrange. It's all about the Blue Jays and the PJs next week, Bob. Pull-up jump shots. You know what a Blue Jay is? Pull-up jumper in the paint, according to Nikovich. Here's a traveling call on Brian Cross. Tony, or, uh, Ed Butkovich, of course, very, very concerned with his assistant, Bill Rux, next to him. 38 to 26. Brian Cross coming in to replace uh, Stacy Stacey's turn. Stacy comes out and Brian Cross comes back in. They'll kind of mold their ball club around those two young men next year, won't they? That's true. A couple of 6'3 youngsters, pretty good way to start. All right, down low, Darren Powell. Powell out front, gets the ball in the lane to Edwards. Short jumper that hangs on the outer iron. Hook battles with slow, they'll jump it. The balls that were falling this afternoon, just not quite rolling home for the toppers this evening. Uh, they also have Jeff Morris back to point guard, Art. Three of their first five is five. Yeah, that's right. But they lose Mr. Sloan and Tracy Sturm. That's two big losses. That means you got to rebuild the franchise, what that means. Here's Brian Sloan across to Tracy Sturm. Routing out front, trying to get to the basketball is Rick Edwards. McLeansboro very patient. They're down to 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Over his head, Tracy Sturm to Dave Morris in the corner. Working the basketball over there is Scott Cravens. Right side now to Tracy Sturm. Comes back to Morris. 
Morris being hounded, but uh, the, the uh, toppers are still sticking back in that basic zone defense. They're going to have to come out and play man to man, I would think, in the final period. Down 12 to 38 to 26. Here is Sloan. Sloan in the paint world. He missed it on the back iron. Rebound. Control taken away from Cook by Tracy Sturm. McLeansboro has it right back. Every miscue by uh, Mount Pulaski tonight has been costly. Oh. Beautiful give and go. Yeah. Tracy Sturm is called for the charge. You saw Sloan set it up on the low post. He fed Tracy Sturm. It's going to be a pretty play. It didn't connect, however. Yes, he missed the shot, and after the shot, he crashes into him. Look at that feed. It's a good call. Look at the After feed. The shot. He would have been shooting this shot the, uh, uh, had it been a bonus. 38-26. Had the ball gone in, it would have been a three-point possibility. Roger Cook. Or Mount Pulaski. Can't get it down. Rebound. Controlled by Jeff Moss. Stolen away defensively by Edwards. Edwards for the Terriers. Left the baseline. They get it off. This time to Derek Powell. Craven's fighting through the pick. And Craven's picked up the foul. Dave Lee uh, out on the edge of the floor with uh, some words of instruction to his own ball player, talking to Brian Sloan rather intently. I think he got his point across to Brian. He goes back out there. 38-26 our score with a minute and 49 to go in the third period. A little collision. Cook goes down on the floor. The ball is inbounded now to Scott Olden and Mount Pulaski. To McHugh. Dan McHugh drives toward the right corner, not all the way in the corner. Back to Cook. Out to Olden, long jumper by Olden, dips in and out, won't go. The rebound, pulled down by Brian Cross. Cross gets it out for McLeansboro. They break the pressure. Cross puts on the brakes against McHugh. Well, out to Moss now, just inside the 10-second line in the attacking zone. Left side. Sturm to Sloan to Cross. Now that's uh, Moss with the ball, or Morris, I should say. Well out on the floor. Jeff Morris. Sturm loses the basketball, but it's carried out of bounds after the steal by Scott Olden. And now for the toppers, it's going to be Hayes checking back in. Steve Hayes comes in. They're going to give Rick Edwards a breather. So you've got Hayes, Olden, McHugh, Cook, and also, of course, uh, Darren Powell on the floor right now from Montalaski. Almost a five-second call, Art. Uh, they had no one to throw to. Fox is letting some time run off the clock. They've got the 12-point lead. There's Brian Cross to Morris. They do handle the ball extremely well. And to Scott Olden falls into uh, Moss. Only the third team foul. Whistle against Mount Pulaski in the uh, second half, so it's a common violation. Down to a minute and two. They pressured on the inbounds hard here. They almost had the five-second call again. Let's see how they play it this time. All right, Morris okay. looking to Cross. Cross comes out to meet the pass. Knocked away by Hayes. Picked up loose by Olden. Holding up over the 10 second line. That's Sloan right behind him. They get it off to Powell for two. Darren Powell, right baseline with the long range bomb, 38 28. What a shooter, Darren Powell is. And he shoots so much better under pressure. It's off a dead dribble that time he fired it away. A fabulous shooter. Down to 35 seconds for the quarter. Ryan Cross for McLeansboro to Brian Sloan. They spell their first names differently, by the way. Brian Cross is B R Y A N. And Sloan is B-R-I-N. Here is Brian Sloan turning, facing the basket, shooting, missing, being fouled. McHugh picks it up. Maybe a two-shot violation. I think it is. Into the uh, lineup for Mount Pulaski comes Pat Walsh, and leaving is going to be Scott Olden. Yes, it's a two-shot foul. I think uh, Brian Sloan was being held by Roger Cook. That'll be shooting, too. Another lineup change as uh, the toppers going a little deeper on their bench. Uh, Sam Jemison checks in. 6'1", 180, a senior with a 4.6 average. Roger Cook goes out for a breather. Mount Pulaski is bound to be a bit more fatigued after that spine-tingling 76-74 win over Providence St. Mel this afternoon in the second game of the uh, day's semifinal program. Sloan is at the line. Not a Back to an 11-point lead for McLeansboro. Brian Sloan, 6'8", senior, headed for Indiana. He's already signed with Bobby Knight. 40 to 28, McLeansboro by 12. Right side, McHugh to Hayes. Here's Pat Wall. Jemison trying to shake free on the baseline. Ball deflected, left side. Darren Howell 
They cover Powell as tightly as they dare. Cravens is on him out of that uh, matchup type of defense. And here's Powell with the jumper. Let's go. Derm came hustling out of the pocket as this play ran out of time. After three, 12 points to play for a lead. Fox is on top, 40 to 28. And one of your network sponsors. Here is McLeansboro still shooting well, 17 out of 33, 51%. Very selective. Not Pulaski, 12 out of 30. A chilly 40% for them. Free throws, four of five for the uh, toppers, six of eight for the Foxes. Rebounds, 20-13 edge to McLeansboro. Turnover is now seven apiece. We have a quarter to go. Jillison is jumping and lost that jump ball situation. It goes to uh, McLeansboro. Tracy Sturm. Low to Brian Sloan. Turn, shoot. He got it. Brian Sloan now with 18, 20, 22. He had 26 this afternoon. 42 to 28. The Foxes looking for their first ever state championship. They finished third last year. Right side is Hayes. Hayes to Walt. Walt to the long range. Got it home. Pat Walt pops it in. We may see yet much of it. Use some of the players did not play quite as extensively this afternoon. Get a little bit of pressure out there. Of course, uh, Walt played quite a bit in that win over St. Mel. Brian Cross, a little double teaming pressure, and on the drive, Craven shot is blocked beautifully by Walt. The ball hit on the baseline. Tough break for not Pulaski. Walt made a great play. Darren Powell picked it up on the baseline. The ball went to Kerr. He sure did. Looked like it, uh, he was all alone. Looked like Scott Craven was all alone, and he comes back and blocks the shot. But back dropped up. it out of bounds. You didn't see it in live action, but the out of bounds play Sloan just poked in the soft jumper. 44 to 30. 28 for Brian Sloan. Brian to drive it is Jemison. Jemison out front to Hayes. Hayes at 18. Switch. Steve Hayes. Miraculous defensive performance by McLeansboro. They held Mount Pulaski to eight points in the third quarter, 10 in the first, 10 in the second. And I guess the team with this kind of firepower, averaging 75.4 points a game, that is a yeoman defensive job, Bob Dallas, no doubt yeah. about it. We've been talking about their defense all along, Art, and it's just fabulous. Uh, it's tough to get a shot off on McLeansboro. Steve Hayes is called for the foul against Brian Sloan. That is team foul number five against Mount Pulaski. And so now, with 6.42 to go, McLeansboro's in the bonus. They have very few uh, defensive laps, if you notice, Art. They're always playing with such great intensity, and they're always in the right place at the right time on defense. 24 points for Sloan. I think I said 26 a moment ago. His free throw misfired. It was very nearly tipped in by uh, Tracy Sturm, however. 12 point advantage, and uh, the toppers need to make their run right now if they're going to get back in this title game. McHugh, left side of the lane. And Walsh, jumper. He's doing his part. Walsh got down his second in a row on the perimeter. Now it's a 10 point ball game. Here's that man to man heat. Full court. Ravens now feeling the pressure. Suddenly, they put a little trap on Brian Sloan. He clears it to Cravens. Right side picked up by Jemison. A collision. Cravens this is off the cross. Offensive foul on Cravens. Take away the bucket. Well, the toppers are about ready to make their last run. Their regulars are rested. Back in they come. Cook. Olden comes back in. Also Edwards. Hayes leaves. Jemison leaves. And uh, also McHugh. So they're back to their starting point. Up. This get may get to be a nail biter down uh, down the stretch arc. Well, Wall stays out there. I believe Wall's out there too, as well as he's playing. Here's Edwards, left side of the lane. The Wall, hat drives left side. Whirls off to Darren Powell, baseline to Wall. Wall loses the basketball. It was a big turnover hard at this particular time. I think Ryan Sloan had a hand in that. It was Morris came up with the basketball. Here's Sloan. Sloan right side of the floor, back out to Morris. Tracy Sturm. Left side, works to Sloan. Back out to Morris, Jeff holding the basketball. 44-34, McLeansboro by 10. Morris, right side to Cravens. Cravens right back to Jeff Morris, top of the circle. Off to Sturm, to Brian Cross, pushes it up, got it. Oh, what a reserve he is. Talk about the super sub. Six points for across. 46-34. Very difficult for the uh, toppers to close on this McLean Girls left. Darren Powell. He's got one white walk home. Out of heavy traffic. Reverse and Holden got it. Pretty play by Scott Holden. Foul by Sloan. Brian Sloan third foul. Brian Sloan gets him here as he's going up. Good foul right here. Look at that move by Holden. Takes him right back into him and catch him on the arm. Well, he got the bucket. Potential, That's the important. Yeah, potential three-point play. 
All right, at the line, Scott Oldham. Can pull his club within nine. He does. That's as close as Mount Pulaski's been for a while. 46-37. Full court, man-to-man -man pressure, and they're willing to trap a little bit as well. Right sideline now to Cravens. Only the high over his head is Scott Cravens. Cravens, bounce pass to Morris. Jeff Morris being hounded. Tough out front by Edwards. They clear it off to Tracy Sturm. Mount Pulaski's really putting some defense on uh, McFensbury at this time. Ravens holding right side. Edwards moves to him. Back out to Morris. Now Edwards shifts off number 13. Takes Morris. Left side, Tracy Sturm. Right side, Brian Cross with the jumper. Good. Cross is shot back there. Off the screen. Eight points for Cross, including two buckets in a row, 48 to 37. The Plainsboro by 11. Four and a half to play. And a lot of pass inside. Jennifer Roger Cook was swatted out of bounds by Brian Cross, who suddenly has lit the place up as far as the Plainsboro is concerned. Holden to Edwards. Rick Edwards brings it in at about six feet. 49 to 38. The Plainsboro trying to ball handle patiently, and of course the uh, hoppers from Mount Pulaski trying to force the turnover. Sloan, right side to Craven. To Tracy Sturm. To Morris, back out to Sloan at 17 feet. To Sturm. Tracy backpedal, gets the ball to Brian Cross. Very, very patient with four minutes to go, and here's a foul on Pat Walsh. Foul number two on Pat Walsh. Walsh is probably thinking to himself, this is St. Patrick's Day. I should have about four more field goals out there. At the free throw line, it's going to be Scott Cravens. First attempt of the evening. One and one. I haven't had a lot of free throws taken in this ball game, really. Not as much defense as play this, really not. Cravens has not been the line tonight. Just that one. one more throw to Cravens. As a free throw shooter, he's 67% of the season. Pretty reliable at the line. Cravens didn't play basketball in McLeansboro last year. This year as a senior, not only has come on, but been a very valuable starter. Second throw is good. He gets one out of two. 49-39, McLeansboro by 10. Three minutes and 57 seconds away from their first state championship. Walsh to Cook to Walsh, traveling. Or lane violation, they're all traveling. I think that uh, probably could have called Roger Cook camp in that lane quite a while, too. At any rate, McLeansboro will inbound. Cross court to cross. Tracy Sturr, magnificent senior forward. Brian Sloan. They like to keep the ball in Sloan or Sturm's hands at all times, if possible. At this particular part of the game. Yeah, Jeff Morris handles it pretty well, too. Yes, he does. Here's a reach in on Rick Edwards. Morris will be shooting his free throw for the evening. At the line will go uh, Jeff Morris. One and one. Three thirty-three. All that remains. Morris's free throw. He got it. Well, the Claysboro Ball Club has played, I would say, a very steady, workmanlike ball game. The defense has been outstanding, obviously, 50 to 39. And that's the way they've come in, and they've gotten the job done in this title game. Not Pulaski, a great scoring ball club, really hasn't been able to get on one of those scoring benches like they had this afternoon. And they can shoot you out in a hurry. They do. Jumper will go. And the guy that's pulled down that rebound, Ryan Slow, is one big reason. They pretty well limited this club to one shot, haven't they? He has just controlled the boards inside on both ends. Best on his defense here, and they only get one shot, Art. Here's Darren Powell, really challenges Morris. Paul is deflected out of bounds and uh, knocked out by Pat Walsh. Going to go right back to McLean's board. I'll tell you, it's getting pretty physical on the ball handlers out there. Well, they're going after him. They know the time's running out. They're going to have to go out and make a Morris at the free throw line. I'd like to have Morris up at that line again. Here's slow into Tracy Sturm. Looks to Morris, back to Cross. 259 left, Cross isn't going to go anywhere. with him. Ball rolls over our way, and uh, I think uh, David Lee wanted to take that shot or at least go to the basket. Well, I think he wanted to put it on the floor at least to uh, make a move with it. Uh, there's no one between he and the goal, and uh, he just stood with it. Powell has been whistled on Rick Edwards. Frank Bassoni, this ball club looked tired to you a little bit, not the last game. 
I don't really think so. Uh, I think there, there's certainly fatigue there, but uh, I believe that they've got the energy that uh, that it takes to, to, to make a comeback. Unfortunately, their shots aren't dropping like they were earlier. Right? Waynesboro is doing such a great job in all the fundamental aspects of the game. First throw by Cross, second throw. By and now it's 52 to 39. We have a timeout. Only 2:57 to go. And one of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Two minutes and 57 seconds remaining in this one. But Waynesboro appears to have locked up its first ever state championship. They lead 52 to 39. Certainly not insurmountable, but uh, very, very close to it, the way McLeansboro is playing defense and the way they're controlling the basketball. Mount Pulaski across. Here's Rick Edwards to uh, Darren Powell. Powell from McHugh with the baseline. The ball sticks in the bracketing. You don't see that too often. Occasionally, it's a jump ball situation. Brian, Brian Sloan immediately went up in sky. Let's watch the ball stick here. It's the first time I've ever seen that in state tournament play, Art. The ball just sticks there. There it is. Brian Sloan at 6'8". Cleared it in a hurry. He didn't tip it either. He grabbed it with both hands, but it's a jump ball situation between the two centers. Sloan and Cook. Sloan clears the basketball off. Here's Tracy Sturm. We've just been asking if that's a rebound. I think if so, it would definitely be a dead ball rebound, would it not? That's right. Ball deflected out to the 10 second line. Morris comes up with it. And Pat Walsh trying to knock the ball away commits the personal foul. 